So tonight's lesson is lesson 90, which is reducing fractions part two. So we did it the first time and now we're going to actually do it again. And I'm just gonna show you kind of another way uh, that you can reduce fractions. So looking at our two circles, the equivalent fractions pictured below name the same amount. We see that four eighths is the same as one half. So we can take four eighths and divide by two so we're going down, we're reducing our fraction of 4 eighths. Now this is in lowest terms, but we're going to want to reduce that 4 eighths in lowest terms. So we can take 4 eighths, and we know 4 and 8, what goes into both of those numbers? 2. So we can reduce by 2, the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. If we reduce 4 eighths by dividing both terms by 2, we find that 4 eighths is equal to 2 fourths. We have our answer right there. Great. But 2 fourths can also be reduced again. If you look at 2 fourths, you can tell, okay, 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So we can actually reduce again a second time to lowest terms. So I'm just going to skip a line and go down here. 2 fourths can be reduced again by 2 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that's where we get our 4 eighths to our lowest terms of 1 half. So this is the answer we're looking for. This is right. 4 eighths can be reduced to 2 fourths, but we want it in lowest terms. In lowest terms is 1 half. So you, there are times when you can reduce twice or even three times. So if you don't know the GCF, the greatest common factor to divide by, but you know that both your numbers are even, you can divide by two, and then see maybe if you can divide by two again. So you can reduce several times and still get your right answer. Now, finding the GCF and reducing is 100% going to be your fastest option every single time, but for those of you who sometimes maybe forget how to do that, you can also reduce fractions this way. All right, here's our first example. There were four orange marbles and eight white marbles in a bag. If one marble is taken from the bag without looking, what is the probability that the marble selected is white? Okay, all right, so since eight, I underlined kind of the most important parts here. Since eight of the 12 marbles are white, the probability that we're gonna select a white marble is we have an eight out of 12 chances, okay? eight out of 12 chances. So this is the probability that when we stick our hand in the bag and we pick out one that it's going to be white, we have eight chances out of 12 to get a white marble. Okay, but again, we want to reduce. And if we look at this number, eight twelfths, obviously we're like, okay, they're both even, two goes in. So I'm gonna divide by two to reduce. Two and two. Eight divided by two, four. Twelve divided by two, six. But I look at my number and again and I say, okay, well, both of those numbers are still even. I can still reduce again. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take four sixths and I can reduce by two because two fits into both of them. Two, two. Four divided by two, two. Six divided by two, three. So now when I look at that number, that's in lowest terms, all the way reduced. Not saying that 4 6 isn't right, because it is reduced from 8 twelfths, but you want it in its lowest, lowest terms, and that's what 2 thirds is going to be. All right, and the last one. Now, there is another thing too. If you wanted to take the GCF, you know, you write down all your factors, pick the greatest common factor that they both have, um, it would be 4. So you would divide 8 twelfths by 4. I'm just going to do it really fast so you can see. Divide by 4 over 4. 8 divided by 4, 2. 12 divided by 4, 3. And you can see we do get the same answer. This way we're only reducing once. This way we're reducing two times. So again, it is entirely up to you unless they ask you to reduce by the GCF. Um, which way you reduce. One's going to be quicker than the other. Um, but it's, it's up to you. All right, the next one. The value of a dime is 40% of the value of a quarter. Write 40% as a reduced fraction. All right, so 40%, if we're gonna write 40% as a fraction, we know that all percents are out of 100, okay? So I'm going to take 40, 
and put it over 100 because that is um, a percent. All right, so if I want to take this into lowest terms, I can see that what's a common number that would go into both of them right away? You should be able to tell that they both end in zero. If they both end in zero, you know for sure five fits in, and you know for sure 10 fits in, but we're gonna use 10 because it ends in a zero, and 40, it, it fits in perfectly. So I'm gonna divide by 10 over 10. Four divided by 10 is four, 10 of 100 divided by 10 is 10. Now, when we look again, we can see that this is not in lowest terms. Both of our numbers are even. Okay, this could happen if both your numbers have a five or they both have a zero at the end, but this one they both have are even. So we know that two can fit into them. So again, I'm gonna take four over 10 and divide by two over two. Four divided by two is two. 10 divided by two is five. So our answer is two fifths. Now, if you were to find the GCF of 40 and of 100, you were to write down all the factors, find the greatest common one, the GCF would be 20. So I would take my 40 over 100, and I would divide by 20 over 20. 40 divided by 20 equals two. 100 divided by 20, how many times does 20 fit into 100? Five. And if you see, we come to the exact same answer, one faster than the other, but they're both right. So unless it tells you to find the GCF, you may pick whichever method works better for you. And here is your lesson practice. Reduce each fraction to its lowest terms. Remember, you can do this by the GCF, or you can do it by doing one or two steps. So 4 twelfths, 6 eighteenths, 16 over 24, 4 over 16, 2 six, 12 sixteenths, sorry, 60 over 100, and then 7 is 3 fourths times 4 fifths. Do that multiplication problem and then reduce your answer.